Hi, I just wanted to do a quick post. I've been asked a lot about um, particularly WordPress and why we integrate with WordPress, why we don't use WordPress, uh, why we should use Fusion HQ sometimes or some other different platforms other than just WordPress. So I wanted to kind of cover the seven reasons why not to use for WordPress. Now, it's really important that you understand I'm not against WordPress. In fact, if you're watching this video at fusiondojo.com, you may well realize already that um, Fusion Dojo is hosted on WordPress. And so I'm not against WordPress at all. However, I do think it has its place and I believe that WordPress is overused and overpromoted by a lot of marketers um, and web uh, developers who really don't know any better. And so, you know, you want to think about this before you create a website, what is its function? And that's perhaps, um, you know, the one of the first reasons not to use WordPress is simply that uh, it's not designed for everything. It's not designed to be a shopping cart. It's not designed to be a sales pl flow process. It's not even really designed to be a large content website. What it is designed for is blogging. And it is extremely good for blogging. Um, in fact, it's one of the best solutions possible for blogging. And that's why I run this blog, uh, the Fusion Dojo blog on WordPress. So that's the first reason is to consider, um, really, is it the most suitable platform for what you're trying to achieve? Number two, and that is the, uh, basically WordPress is not actually that SEO optimized, at least not straight out of the box. Now I know that you can optimize uh, WordPress and you can make it extremely SEO optimized. However, it does require a lot of additional plugins and configuration setting changes, etc., etc. Um, you know, outside of simply it being a blog where you have regular content posted, which is just an SEO uh, you know, an SEO strategy in itself. Um, you know, the actual structure for the WordPress website needs a bit of modification before it's SEO optimized. And there are other systems out there that are more SEO optimized out of the box for how most people will use them. Now, again, I know the hardcore WordPress fanatics out there will be telling me, well, you know, you've got this plugin, you've got that plugin, and you know, you can make it more SEO optimized than almost any other platform. And that may be true to a certain degree. It has a lot of SEO potential. But I would suggest that 90, 95% of people never even begin to reach that potential. And so therefore there are much better systems out there uh, that come straight out of the box, ready to go, and are much more user friendly. Um, you know, this is another point. Number three is customizing themes. Uh, now for those of you who know what you're doing, you know how to customize a theme, it's not a problem. But for the average user who wants to make their website uh, unique, make it look different, who doesn't want to use a, a template from the theme galleries, etc., then you know it's uh, it can be a fiddly process. Even myself with this particular blog, you know, we've taken a basic standard theme and made some modifications to it to try and make it look how we want it. It still took us quite a bit of fiddling, even though I understand uh, WordPress theme template structures. Uh, I have a couple of coders and a graphic designer on the team, um, but it still took us a bit of going back and forth and fiddling. So for the average person who's trying to set up their first website, it may not be as easy as uh, you anticipate. Um, what else have I got here? Um, it's oversized. Point number four really is it's absolutely oversized. It's a, an inflated and bloated piece of script. Um, now this might not sound important when you consider the amount of available um, space on your hosting account and they say unlimited space, unlimited bandwidth, etc. However, um, there is no such thing as unlimited. Um, that's purely marketing um, and really to be honest, complete lies because uh, if you try and add too many uh, sites to your account, they will eventually close you down or complain. And unlimited bandwidth is only unlimited as much as it is available. Now what you need to understand about WordPress is it's not 
as I say, necessarily a problem in terms of how much space it takes up on the hosting account in terms of hard drive space. But what it is a problem with is the amount of available uh, memory that it uses in your server. Now to make this kind of simple for most people to understand, if you think about your computer, your computer has a hard drive. Well, that's like the storage space on your server. Uh, now each server also has its memory and uh, that's kind of the same as having the memory or the RAM inside your computer. And so you know if you have too many applications open at once, the computer starts slowing down. Um, and for those of you who can remember back to the late 90s and uh, you know, computers used to suffer from this a lot. Now we've got a much more expanded memory. But even so, for if you're trying to run too many applications like large video editing programs, a video, uh, graphics editing package, and Word, and a few um, browsers open at the same time, you'll still notice a performance decrease. Well, the same is true with your server. So if you have WordPress installed on your server, it's taking a lot of memory. And this means that the server will suffer. And for a lot of people who are using hosted accounts, uh, sorry, shared hosting accounts, then you will be being affected by other people who are using that same server, which means the more, and these days, you know, who isn't hosting a WordPress website? So you have so many people all on a shared server, and the amount of memory required for WordPress to run is quite heavy. So basically, this is uh, reduced performance. Um, OK, so here's another problem with it. It's open source. And while that might sound like a good thing, it actually opens up to a lot of problems. Uh, because it's such a popular platform, uh, it means that it's targeted a lot by hackers. And because it's open source, it makes it very easy for those hackers to get to the root source code of the software and understand basically how best to hack it, finding loopholes, finding little holes um, in the coding so that they can then actually hack the website. And we've seen this time and time again throughout uh, the last few years where there are major attacks on WordPress websites. Some can be just a minor inconvenience. Others have taken, uh, in a couple of my website's cases, taken them down completely. And we've had to spend like, you know, days trying to go through the code and find where the, which of the affected files. And it's just, you know, it, it's a major issue if your entire business is being or is relying on a WordPress website. Um, now that leads us to problem number six, which is very much connected to the last issue. And that's because that people are always finding new, you know, loopholes or uh, holes in the coding and constantly uh, hacking them. Uh, that, along with just the fact that it's constantly being upgraded, means that you need to update WordPress regularly. And while the actual update function is very quick, very simple, it's not a problem, um, it does need doing and it needs maintaining, which, you know, for me, I'm lazy and the less I need to do, the better. But it also leads us to problem number seven. And that is that each time you update it, it can cause incompatibility issues with some of the previous plugins that you've had. So now you need to update your plugins as well. And you're, you know, you're relying on independent plugin developers to constantly update their plugins so that uh, you know, they work. Um, and potentially issues with or compatibility issues with the theme as well. So as you can see, although WordPress is indeed extremely robust, extremely flexible, has a lot of potential fun functionality with the available different plugins that are available, uh, it's not necessarily the best platform of choice for every single site that you create. And um, I think it's very overused, and I th really encourage people to start thinking beyond the, oh, just set it up on WordPress. Um, because as you can see, we're going to run into more and more issues as time goes on. Um, and you know, it, it's such a headache changing platforms once a site's built. You really want to know what you're doing before you start. So that's my two pence worth. Um, you know, free, feel free to comment. I know that will certainly stir uh, some people up a little. Um, mm -hmm.